Hello stars, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another vlog day and happy Friday. Wherever you are right now, of course, I wish you the very best and I hope you're taking care of yourself. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the four types of flying monkeys that the narcissist usually recruits to hoover you back in. My stars, mwah, thank you guys and gals so much for your subscription. And of course, thank you for being my star. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell should you become a part of the star family. Okay, so the four types of flying monkeys that the narcissist usually recruits to hoover you back in. Well, one of those types are coverts. All right, so that sounds familiar because usually when we say covert, we think about the narcissist or the cluster personality. Well, the narcissist and the cluster personality, actually they have a lot in common with flying monkeys. The narcissist and cluster personality, they will recruit people who seem to love and care about you. They seem to be your friends. In other words, they have a hidden agenda. This is why they agree to be recruited by the narcissist and the cluster personality in the first place. Because usually there's jealousy, there may be envy, or they may just not like you at all, okay? But they keep it well hidden. Those who are closest to you, the narcissist likes to recruit for flying monkeys. This way, it's very easy to hoover you back in. All right, so one of the topics I'm gonna to be going over with you is how flying monkeys usually lack foresight and wisdom especially when it pertains to the narcissist and plus the personality's hidden agenda. Okay, so the flying monkeys of the narcissist usually see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, especially whereas it pertains to the narcissist and or plus personality. But when it comes to you or any other targeted prey, all bets are off. Now they see evil, they speak evil, and they hear it too even though it may not be true. Another topic I'm gonna to be going over is how we can learn valuable lessons from the so-called wise monkeys who see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, unlike the flying monkeys that are recruited by the narcissist and or cluster personality. All right, having said all that, please like and or share today's video. Don't forget to check the description box below for further details to today's vlog. And of course, wherever you may be right now, I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for the video. The four types of flying monkeys recruited by narcissists that see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil of them. Topics of discussion. Narcissists often recruit flying monkeys who lack wisdom and foresight. Second topic, what type of flying monkey are you dealing with? Not all flying monkeys are the same. Third topic, flying monkeys see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil unless it is designed to harm the narcissist's targeted prey. Last and final topic, consider using the powerful energy of the three wise monkeys to thrive forward past the narcissist's shenanigans and diabolical tactics. And of course, I will be providing the tools, references, and resources. The symbology behind the three wise monkeys. For further reading, please check the description box below. Point number one, the flying monkey of a narcissist often is a person who has vices that are used by the narcissist as leverage to get him or her to do the dirty work of hoovering the targeted prey of the narcissist. Enablers tend to be prime for recruitment to become a flying monkey for narcissists and or cluster personality types. So the flying monkeys who are enablers to the narcissist and cluster personality are often prime choice for hoovering the targeted prey back in. This is often because the targeted prey is also a person who is involved or was involved not only with the narcissist, but the flying monkey in question. 
Sometimes it's more than one flying monkey that the narcissist will use to hoover the target prey back in. But the bottom line is this. Most of the time, narcissists, they will use someone else that is close to you because they already know that you are done with them. So the narcissist will choose the flying monkey who is also an enabler to him or her to do their bidding or their dirty work of hoovering you back in. Let's move forward. Flying monkeys of narcissists can be very naive, whereas it pertains to how far narcissists are often willing to go for narcissistic supply. He or she often chooses to see no evil, hear no evil, or speak no evil concerning the narcissist. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that whoever the flying monkey may be, they might be an enabler, they may not be an enabler. But the bottom line is they often choose not to see the narcissist for whom he or she really is. So they often will not see any evil. They will not hear any evil and they will not speak any evil concerning the narcissist. However, when it comes to the targeted prey, all bets are off. Narcissists and occlusive personalities often choose flying monkeys who see as they do, who behave somewhat like they do. In other words, they are easy to manipulate. Very often, the narcissist and or cluster B personality will choose a flying monkey who they have full knowledge or they have a lot of knowledge about their vices. Do they like to drink? Do they gamble? Do they have an addiction? Okay, did they cheat on their wife? Did they cheat on their husband? You all get the picture. The flying monkey is often someone who has certain weaknesses that the narcissist has full knowledge of. So they will often use that as leverage to manipulate him or her to do some of their dirty work. That's where you come in. The narcissist and occlusive personality often chooses a flying monkey that doesn't like you. They already have some sort of issue with you. So the narcissist, they're killing two birds with one stone. The narcissist and cluster personality, they will often use flying monkeys as pawns, even though it looks like they may be getting along. The narcissist and cluster personality, you best believe they're going to have a lot of dirt on the flying monkeys that they recruit to hoover you back in. This is why I stated the narcissist and cluster B personality, when they recruit flying monkeys, they often kill two birds with one stone or more birds with one stone. The flying monkey is often naive and lacks wisdom as well as foresight, whereas it pertains to the narcissist. But when it comes to the targeted prey, that's often not the case. Let's move forward. Instead, flying monkeys recruited by the narcissist unleash their contempt for the narcissist's targeted prey. Enabling flying monkeys often lack wisdom and foresight to the diabolical tactics of the narcissist and or cluster personality type. Let's move forward. Right. Narcissists are notorious for being very methodical when choosing which individual suits his or her agenda to hoover the targeted prey back into a very dysfunctional situation. His or her enablers, who are also close to the targeted prey, are often prime choice. Beware, not every flying monkey is an enabler. And as I stated before, some of the flying monkeys, they have particular vices that the narcissist knows about. This is often enough to recruit the flying monkey or making them prime choice to hoover you back in. Sometimes the flying monkeys not only have certain vices, but they also are enablers to the narcissist and occlusive personality. Again, making them prime choice to hoover you back in. Classes of the narcissist flying monkeys. Enablers, drama kings and queens, low vibration, low consciousness, Embody lower level entities, spirits, and energy. All right, I'm going to go right to that last flying monkey.
who embodies lower level entities, spirits, and energy. Okay, now what does that look like? This is a flying monkey who has particular vices, such as a gambling problem. They may have addiction issues, okay? They may be alcoholics, they may be cheating on their spouses, or they, they may be uh, engaged in other diabolical tactics, not just the narcissist, but the flying monkey. The flying monkey may not be so much as an evil twin of the narcissist or cluster personality, they're more like the first cousin to the narcissist and cluster personality type because they have vices that the narcissist knows about, right? Flying monkeys are often not... Uh, flying monkeys often have a hidden agenda of their own for agreeing to be recruited as a flying monkey. Oftentimes, the flying monkey doesn't like the targeted prey or they have something against the targeted prey. They may be jealous, envious, okay, or they just might flat out not like him or her. So the narcissist, again, often recruits flying monkeys who have some vices as well as particular hidden agendas to agree to even be used as a flying monkey in the first place. The narcissist and a cluster personality type and the, and the flying monkeys, they often share certain hidden agendas, whereas the target prey is concerned. This is where triangulation may occur. So you will often find flying monkeys of this type or caliber. They embody lower level entities, spirits and energy. That's where your lower consciousness and your low vibration comes in. Okay, now the chart below, the link to the chart is in the description box below. If you're interested in studying this chart, this chart talks about how entities process energy. How do entities or an entity process energy? Now, some of you may be wondering, what does this have to do with flying monkeys and narcissists? A whole lot <laughs> so just study this chart and you will see how an entity processes energy all right the energy can be lower or higher case in point you may be the person who was dealing with a narcissist and flying monkey right or several narcissists several flying monkeys but you're the person who's coming into the situation with a higher consciousness. You may be operating or functioning from a higher vibration. So what type of energy or spirit may you have? Okay, that may be energy, which is expressing of love, joy. Okay, you're, you're of a higher vibration. You are of a higher consciousness. So another way to look at your emotion is that it is energy in motion. So if you're coming into a situation with a flying monkey and or narcissist with a higher vibration and a higher consciousness, then the energy that you're going to be bringing in is that of love, joy, gratitude. The narcissist and or flying monkeys, they're coming into the situation with low vibration, low consciousness. So their energy reflects jealousy, anger, hatred. And I think you all are getting the picture now. This means each individual can embody a higher or a lower level of spirit, entity, or energy. So if you're coming in with a higher and they're coming in with a lower, that's going to produce or cause conflict. So narcissists and our flying monkeys, they often come into the situation with a lower vibration, a lower consciousness. So therefore, often they embody a lower level of entity, spirit, and energy. So whereas it pertains to the flying monkey, this is also the case. They, they usually embody a lower level of an entity, spirit, and energy. So how do they process and use energy. 
This is what this chart is for. It shows you how an entity processes energy. Now let's take a look at the classes of the flying monkeys. Some of those flying monkeys tend to be covert. The second class of flying monkey is an addict. The third class, communal. The fourth class, pathological. Okay, so covert means in secret. Some of those flying monkeys are quite sneaky, all right? But they work for the narcissist. So they have similar hidden agendas as the narcissist does. And that is to prey upon the targeted prey. That is to cause him or her harm in some way, shape, or form. Some of these flying monkeys, they are addicts. This is where the vices come in. So the next class, communal. This kind of goes into the, them being covert or in secret because communal means that they like to uh, come off as a good Samaritan and they like to showcase that. Some flying monkeys are like this. Some of them may be in your families. They may also be the enabler. They're the ones who are close to you and the narcissist knows it. This is where the triangulation comes in. So that particular flying monkey to you may come off as a person who's loving and supportive, who's your best friend, who's on your side. But undercover, they work for the narcissist to hoover you back in. The fourth class is pathological. Now, this is the flying monkey that you can pretty much see coming. This is the flying monkey that you may party with. You may have a real good time with. Deep down, you know they're no good for you though. This is a flying monkey that you know they're only good for the party. When the chips are down, they're gone. But you just like hanging out with him or her. They're the life of the party. They may be people who have a gambling problem. They may be the ones who are cheating on their wives and or husbands or their lovers. They may be the ones who are full of drama. Okay, they're the drama kings and drama queens. The pathological flying monkey is the one that you know not to call two or three o'clock in the morning when you may have gotten locked up in jail or you are in some sort of other crisis. Okay, they're not the ones to call. But they will hang around you as long as the party is on and popping. Okay? <laughs> All right. Let's move forward. Being of like mind, narcissists and their flying monkeys often perceive various target prey in a similar fashion. Triangulation can occur if the flying monkey happens to be emotionally, financially, and or socially invested in the narcissist, close to be personality type, and targeted prey. Triangulation serves the narcissist the most, while it often serves the flying monkey to a certain degree. Okay, so the narcissist and or close to be personality, they usually have first dibs when it comes to a successful triangulation situation. All right, so the narcissist and close to personality, they often get the most narcissistic supply in such a situation, whereas the flying monkey or the flying monkeys that they have recruited, uh, they get some satisfaction out of it all, okay, out of the triangulation. The flying monkey is also being used as a pawn by the narcissist. This is why they don't get the best of the triangulation situation. That goes to the narcissist because they're the ones that's running the whole show. The flying monkey, again, is also being used as a pawn. Some flying monkeys, after the job is done, are discarded by the narcissist. All right. Some of you may have never heard that being said before, but just think about it. You either have gone through this yourself or you know someone who has after you have been triangulated. You also heard that the flying monkey was discarded. They may have come crying to you after the fact. Okay, so some uh, narcissists and cluster personalities, they really play dirty when it comes to triangulation. So after they're done with the flying monkey and you have been hoovered back in, 
This is why sometimes some of you have gotten word that the flying monkey that they recruited to hoover you back in got tossed aside. They got discarded. They were devaluated. And you don't hear about this very often. But just think about the nature of the cluster B personality and the narcissist. And it'll make sense to you. Of course, they're going to discard of the flying monkey eventually because they are also being pawned. The three wise monkeys choose to see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. One thing that can be learned from this philosophy is to use energy to focus upon thriving forward. Instead of supplying the narcissist while providing flying monkeys the satisfaction of engaging in vampirism at your expense. Now remember the vices of the flying monkeys that I was speaking of earlier? Well, vampirism is one of them. The narcissist and cluster personality, we already know that they usually have a case of vampirism. Okay, what does that look like? They like to suck your energy dry. This also goes for the flying monkey, even though he or she is being used as a pawn. See, they also have a case of vampirism. And the narcissist and cluster personality, they often know this. This is also why they are prime choice for being recruited as a flying monkey in the first place. Because the narcissist and cluster personality, when they recruit flying monkeys, they often choose people who are like-minded. The flying monkey, they will engage in vampirism at your expense. Because often, they have some sort of issue with you in the first place. And again, this can be a family member. It can be a spouse. It can be someone that you deem near and dear. Flying monkeys, when you really think about it, the way they operate, they have a case of vampirism because they do drain you dry. They are often very draining just to be around. Even the flying monkey who is the life of the party. Just think about the last time that you were dealing with him or her and they may have wanted to borrow money from you and they didn't pay it back. How did you feel about it? But every time you turn around, they're at a party. Every time you turn around, they're at some sort of uh, social event trying to get rich quick. These are the type of flying monkeys that are very much engaging in vampirism at your expense because you're left spent, if not hung high and dry. Okay, let's take a look at the tools. Tool number one, practice self-preservation personal boundaries, assertion, and emotional discipline in order to utilize your energy for thriving forward while healing past narcissistic abuse. Tool number two is subscribe. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the mindfulness kit when the narcissist pulls shenanigans. Okay, sometimes the narcissist and the cussy personality, they start pulling shenanigans that work our last nerve. So right. when the narcissist starts to pull shenanigans that really get those unpleasant emotions such as sadness and anger to come up, okay? Because this is something that's usually the case when narcissists and cluster personality start pulling shenanigans. It feels a certain way when the narcissist and cluster personality starts pulling shenanigans. Anger and sadness are two of the main emotions, I say, that's usually felt when narcissists pull shenanigans. Okay, so the mindfulness kit. We're going to be talking about the contents of your mindfulness kit. And we're going to be talking about what mindfulness is. Okay, there, there's a few things that I have in my mindfulness kit, right? <laughs> Such as my little rubber ball here. Sometimes what I do is I will go ahead and I will throw this against the wall, especially when I'm feeling a little bit irritated by something the narcissist has said or done. Okay, so also we're going to be talking about distraction plans. When you have a distraction plan, this is going to help you to stay focused. Now, I know this may sound like an oxymoron, what I'm about to say, but when you have a distraction, it helps you to stay focused on thriving forward. All right, some of the contents that you may have in your mindfulness kit has something to do with the distraction plan, such as having the rubber ball, but not only that, having a rubber band, and you snap that against your wrist, just like that, right? Sometimes I do So this. while you're being distracted, 
from the stressors caused by the narcissist pulling shenanigans, you're also focusing. And I'll get deeper into that and how that works later in the video. Now I'm going to go over with you some of the things that I have in my mindfulness kit. Now I've explained the rubber band as well as the rubber ball, right? But another thing I have is my narcissist repellent, okay? We talked about that. The narcissist repellent. All right, now what does the narcissist repellent consist of? It consists of practicing self-preservation, practicing personal boundaries, emotional discipline, and assertion. Okay, so the narcissist repellent is something that is going to keep the narcissist at bay. Will it stop them from actually attempting to get the narcissist to supply from you? No, probably not, but having that narcissist repellent is something that will keep the narcissist at bay, at least. <laughs> Another thing that I have in my narcissist kit is a, you know, just like that, like a flash water, you know, just keeping those narcissists at bay, right? <laughs> so we're gonna also be talking about the self regulatory processing or self-soothing. I'm also going to go over with you the mindfulness exercises. Now, I just demonstrated one for you, and that is just taking a All right, so band. another thing we're going to be talking about is the mindfulness exercises. Now, some of these things I do for myself, especially when things are just a little bit stressful, when the narcissist or cluster personality starts to say and do things that really bring up anger or sadness. So when that happens, I take my little mindfulness kit and I start looking for things, such as a good book to read. Now, sometimes I eat chocolate, but sometimes if I don't have any chocolate, I'll read about it. So just basically having a good book to read, this distracts you from some of the things that are going on instead of becoming reactionary. Okay, so the mindfulness the kit is to help you from becoming reactionary. When a narcissist starts to pull shenanigans, sometimes they want you to become reactionary. This way they tap into your energy field and they can feed from it. Now this does not mean that you're supposed to walk around and be emotionless. No, this is actually quite to the contrary. When you start to feel certain emotions, your mindfulness kit can save the day. Another thing that I like to have in my mindfulness kit are my oils, okay? I love lavender. This is my lavender oil. And I also have other types of oils such as peppermint, you know, uh, uh, all types of essential oils. Now this also helps me when I start to practice mindfulness exercises. So during the mindfulness exercises, another thing that you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be engaging in all five senses. Smell, touch, taste, sight, and hearing. This is something that's going to help you practice self-regulatory processing. You know, sometimes you may not even wanna look at the narcissist. You can pop your shades out, Okay, you can put your shades on and be like, I don't even see you right now. And you can have your little diva moment. You're entitled to the diva <laughs> moment. Okay, so the mindfulness exercises again will involve the five senses. And this is when you're going to practice self-regulatory processing and self-soothing. And as I stated before, you know, you can have something like the rubber band or the rubber ball to bounce against the wall or to, you know, just squeeze that rubber ball. But if you don't want to do that, you can use essential oils. This is what I have. I have lavender, peppermint, vanilla, you know, all these types of essential oils can just soothe the senses. One of the five senses is smell, right? So when you take in or you breathe in the essential oils, sometimes you may calm down. This will help you to calm down when the narcissist is working on your last nerve by pulling shenanigans. So one of the five senses is sight. So even if you really don't even want to look at the narcissist and you know, you're like, okay, I'm having my diva moment right now and I'm entitled because you're saying things that I really don't want to hear and not only that, I don't want to see you right now. Because <laughs> sometimes we have those moments when we're dealing with the narcissist and cluster personality. Okay, so these are just a few things we're going to be talking about in the video. Please mind the description box below and don't forget to like and or share today. Having said all that, let's get on with the rest of the video. Next tool, build and work your support base. Take steps to give yourself permission to become more comfortable with expressing what you have experienced. Dysfunctional relationships with narcissists and occlusive personality types are often filled with chaos, drama, and flying monkeys who sometimes enable him or her. Your support base ought to serve as a constructive outlet for you.
Okay, so one of the things that I have found personally that a support base does is to help me to focus on what I need to do in order to continue to thrive forward, heal and grow past narcissistic abuse. But not only that, it may be dysfunctional families, it may be other things, you know, other challenges that I'm, I'm facing. But a support base is designed to help you to practice effective tools for coping whatever challenges you may be facing. So if you have a support base, it's supposed to serve as a place where you can express what you have experienced. That's a positive outlet for you. And a support base is supposed to be consisting of people who are, of course, not like the flying monkey. They're not like the narcissist. Your support base is supposed to consist of people who have proven or who are proving to be trustworthy. Okay, unlike the flying monkey, unlike the narcissist, they're not emotionally safe for you. They're not trustworthy. So they don't belong anywhere in your support base. So when you build and work your support base, it is often a place where you can be comfortable with expressing what you have experienced. References and resources. Please check out the description box below for references and resources. I'm Luminous Star and I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight. And of course, wherever you are right now, I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos.